Imagine a world where every person is capable of living a life of fulfillment and happiness. A world where people have the skills to understand their emotions, process their thoughts, and behave in a manner that's not harmful to others. Now, what if I told you that not everyone is capable of doing that? In fact, some people are wired differently, and they are more prone to deviant behavior than others. Today, we're going to dive into the mind of one of the most feared and misunderstood personalities, a serial killer. A few years ago, I was scrolling through the internet, and I came across a news article that left me chilled to the bone. It was about a man who had killed over 10 people, and when he was finally caught, he confessed to the crimes with an eerie calmness. I couldn't help but wonder, what would drive someone to commit such heinous acts? And that's what brings me here today. Number 1. Defining a Serial Killer I like to define who a serial killer really is. A serial killer is someone who has killed at least three people over a period of time, with a cooling off period between each killing. According to research, serial killers usually have a history of childhood abuse, neglect, or trauma. This leads to a breakdown in their psyche, and they begin to view the world differently. The definition of a serial killer can vary slightly depending on the source, but most definitions agree that a serial killer is someone who has killed multiple victims over a period of time, typically with a cooling off period between each killing. The exact number of victims required to qualify as a serial killer can also vary, with some sources using a minimum of two victims and others requiring at least three. One common factor among serial killers is a history of childhood abuse, neglect, or trauma. Research has shown that a significant percentage of serial killers have experienced some form of abuse or neglect in their childhood, such as physical or sexual abuse, emotional neglect, or abandonment. This type of early trauma can have a profound impact on a person's psyche, leading to the development of personality disorders and other mental health issues. Serial killers often view the world differently than most people. They may feel a sense of alienation or detachment from others, which can make them feel like outsiders. This can contribute to their antisocial behavior and inability to form healthy relationships. They may also have an intense fascination with death, violence, and control, which can drive them to commit murder. Despite the commonalities among serial killers, it's important to note that not all individuals who experience childhood trauma become serial killers. Many people who experience abuse or neglect go on to lead healthy and productive lives. However, research suggests that a history of childhood trauma is a risk factor for violent behavior, including serial killing. Overall, Understanding the definition of a serial killer and the factors that contribute to their behavior is an important step in preventing future tragedies. By recognizing the warning signs of childhood trauma and intervening early, we may be able to help prevent individuals from developing violent tendencies later in life. Number 2. The Psychology of a Serial Killer Have you thought about the psychology behind action of a serial killer? Serial killers typically have personality disorders that impair their ability to function properly in society. Some of these disorders include antisocial personality disorder, narcissistic personality disorder, and borderline personality disorder. These disorders manifest in their behavior, and they are often unable to control their impulses, leading to violence. Serial killers are individuals who have committed multiple murders, typically with a similar method of operation, over an extended period of time. The psychology of serial killers is complex and varied, but research has identified several common personality traits and disorders that are frequently associated with these individuals. One of the most commonly identified disorders in serial killers is antisocial personality disorder, ASPD, which is characterized by a pervasive disregard for the rights of others and a lack of empathy or remorse. Individuals with ASPD may have a history of criminal behavior, impulsivity, and a tendency to manipulate or exploit others for personal gain. These traits make it difficult for them to maintain stable relationships, hold down a job, or function effectively in society. Narcissistic Personality Disorder NPD, is another disorder that is often found in serial killers. This disorder is characterized by an excessive sense of self-importance, a need for admiration, and a lack of empathy for others. Individuals with NPD may become violent or aggressive when their sense of superiority is challenged, and they may use violence to maintain control over others. Borderline Personality Disorder BPD, 
is a third disorder that is frequently found in serial killers. Individuals with BPD may struggle with emotional regulation and have a history of unstable relationships, impulsivity, and self-destructive behavior. They may also have a distorted sense of self-image, which can lead to violent outbursts when their perceived sense of self is threatened. Other factors that may contribute to the psychology of a serial killer include childhood trauma, abuse, neglect, or exposure to violence. Some researchers also suggest that a combination of biological and environmental factors may play a role in the development of these disorders and the subsequent violent behavior. Overall, the psychology of a serial killer is complex and multifaceted, and no single factor can fully explain their behavior. However, a better understanding of the personality traits and disorders commonly associated with these individuals can help identify and prevent future acts of violence. Number 3. The Role of Environment While genetics play a role in shaping an individual's personality, environmental factors also play a crucial role in shaping a serial killer's behavior. Growing up in an abusive household, exposure to violence, and substance abuse are some of the environmental factors that increase the likelihood of becoming a serial killer. While genetics can influence an individual's personality and behavior, it is important to acknowledge the significant role that environmental factors can play in the development of a serial killer. Childhood experiences, social relationships, and exposure to traumatic events can all shape an individual's behavior and decision-making processes in ways that can contribute to the development of violent tendencies. One of the most common environmental factors associated with the development of serial killers is childhood abuse and neglect. Children who grow up in households where physical, emotional, or sexual abuse is prevalent may develop maladaptive coping strategies, such as aggression or detachment, as a means of protecting themselves. These coping strategies can persist into adulthood and contribute to a propensity for violent behavior. Exposure to violence is another environmental factor that can increase the likelihood of developing violent tendencies. Children who witness or experience violence may become desensitized to its effects, leading to a diminished sense of empathy for others and an increased likelihood of resorting to violent behavior as a means of problem-solving. Substance abuse is also a common environmental factor associated with serial killers. Substance abuse can alter an individual's judgment and decision-making abilities, leading to impulsive or reckless behavior. Additionally, substance abuse may increase an individual's likelihood of engaging in criminal behavior as a means of obtaining drugs or money to support their addiction. Other environmental factors, such as social isolation or lack of positive role models, can also contribute to the development of a serial killer. Individuals who lack healthy social relationships may become increasingly detached from society and may resort to violent behavior as a means of asserting control or seeking attention. In conclusion, while genetics may play a role in the development of personality disorders associated with serial killers, environmental factors are also crucial in shaping an individual's behavior. Growing up in an abusive household, exposure to violence, and substance abuse are just a few examples of the environmental factors that can increase the likelihood of becoming a serial killer. Understanding these factors can help identify individuals who may be at risk for developing violent tendencies and may aid in the prevention of future acts of violence. Number 4. The Significance of Childhood As mentioned earlier, childhood abuse and neglect are some of the factors that can contribute to the development of a serial killer. As children, serial killers are often exposed to violence, sexual abuse, and neglect. These experiences can lead to a breakdown in their sense of self, and they begin to view the world as a hostile place. Childhood experiences play a significant role in the development of an individual's personality and behavior. For serial killers, childhood experiences are often marked by abuse, neglect, or exposure to violence. These experiences can shape their perception of the world, leading to maladaptive coping strategies, emotional dysregulation, and an increased likelihood of engaging in violent behavior. One of the most common childhood experiences associated with serial killers is abuse. Children who are physically or emotionally abused may develop a heightened sense of anxiety, fear, and a diminished sense of self-worth. This can lead to feelings of powerlessness and a desire to exert control over others, which may manifest as violent behavior in adulthood. Sexual abuse is also prevalent among serial killers. Children who are sexually abused may develop a distorted sense of sexuality, 
which can lead to confusion, shame, and feelings of isolation. This can contribute to a sense of disconnection from society and a desire for revenge or retribution against those who have wronged them. Neglect is another childhood experience that can contribute to the development of a serial killer. Children who are neglected may develop a sense of abandonment or detachment from others, which can lead to feelings of loneliness and isolation. This can contribute to a lack of empathy for others and an increased likelihood of engaging in violent behavior. In addition to these experiences, exposure to violence in childhood can also contribute to the development of a serial killer. Children who witness or experience violence may become desensitized to its effects, leading to a diminished sense of empathy for others and an increased likelihood of resorting to violent behavior as a means of problem-solving. Overall, childhood experiences play a significant role in shaping an individual's personality and behavior. For serial killers, childhood experiences are often marked by abuse, neglect, and exposure to violence. These experiences can lead to a breakdown in their sense of self, and they begin to view the world as a hostile place. Understanding the significance of childhood experiences can help identify individuals who may be at risk for developing violent tendencies and may aid in the prevention of future acts of violence. Number 5. The Role of Fantasy Fantasy is often an integral part of a serial killer's modus operandi. They often have elaborate fantasies that revolve around control, power, and dominance. These fantasies often lead to their killings, and they are unable to differentiate between reality and their delusions. Understanding the mind of a serial killer can be a daunting task, but it's crucial to understand what drives these individuals to commit such heinous acts. It's important to remember that not all individuals who experience abuse or neglect as children become serial killers. However, it's essential to acknowledge that these factors can contribute to the development of such behavior. In conclusion, we need to continue studying the psychology of a serial killer to help prevent such behavior from happening. We must work towards creating a society where individuals who are struggling with their emotions and impulses have access to the help they need. Let's work towards creating a world where every person has the opportunity to live a fulfilling life, and no one is left behind. Thank you for watching.